We recently launched our new documentary. One of the most extraordinary experiences we had while shooting that documentary was our encounter with the Sami indigenous communities. Hello, Stefan. Boris, Boris, welcome to Sapmi. In this new documentary, we want to have a deeper dive into their way of life, into their perspectives, and confront that with other ways of thinking. To recapitulate, Climate change is the biggest challenge in our lifetime. To end our dependency on polluting fossil fuels, we will need large quantities of a multitude of energy transition metals, for instance, lithium, cobalt and nickel. These energy transition metals are required to produce electric vehicles, batteries, wind turbines and solar panels. Unlike in many parts of the world, in the Nordic countries, mining is done in a responsible way. Responsible mining means minimizing environmental impact, safe working conditions, while respecting local communities. While in the rest of Europe, the NIMBY principle prevails, in the north of Sweden, the local population is in favor of more responsible mining in the region. Uh, I'm positive about it. Uh, I think it's great. I, I like it. <laughs> I'm working in the, in the, in the mine, so it's, it's, it's marvelous. <laughs> it's uh, necessary for Kiruna, so we can still work and live here. But also here up north, there is one group of people that resists. The indigenous Sami population. They have lived in and with nature for millennia. Fishing, hunting and reindeer husbandry are central to Sami culture and society. The new mining expansion goes against everything they stand for. I don't know if it's safe for me to, to stand here. Yes, of course, yeah. why not? <laughs> I have no food. So reindeer husbandry is your history and your presence. Yes, it is. Following my ancestors. Cho cho choice of life and culture. Yeah, and I understand that you believe this way of living is under pressure now from the mining industry here and potential expansions of the mining. Yes. Is that the case? Yes, a green transition and the demands from European Union puts a very big pressure on the indigenous peoples of the Arctic. We are not the entertainment for European Union or Europeans. We have the right to continue with our uh, uh, culture and livelihoods and reign their husbandry if, if we choose so ourselves, and we do obviously do so. During large periods of the year, 250,000 of the Sami reindeer are free to graze wherever they want in the northern parts of Sweden, Finland and Norway. The mining expansion is disrupting their grazing routes as the landscape is fragmentized. And this reindeer husbandry is not only their culture, but also their food. Climate change is escalating and it affects everything that is living. And it also affects animals and, and the parasites and diseases are spreading to the north that we have never seen before. I feel your, uh, your pain, absolutely. Uh, on the other hand, of course, we, we know that without metals, we, we can't make a transition to a climate neutral economy uh, when the metals are available here in the north. Isn't there a possibility to do it in a way that is socially, ecologically, culturally responsible? We can live without metals, but we can't live without food. If we don't have the possibility to have a food sovereignty as indigenous peoples, we have lost one huge and important item for our culture's survival. The one of the few remaining possibilities to combat climate change for coming generations will be lost, and it will be lost forever. It is not in Amazonas the solution lies only, it, but also up here in the circumpolar Arctic. So you don't see any possibility of a reconciliation, a model in which you share benefits with the mining companies here? Not if it's uh, indigenous people to sit with a, with, a, <laughs> with a bill in the end. Dr. Peter Tom Jones feels for the Sami. They have the right to maintain, protect and develop their cultural heritage. The Sami, like many other indigenous populations around the world, are vulnerable and largely voiceless. 
Jones has indicated that the refusal of rich communities to have mines in their backyard indirectly leads to new mines opening up in those regions of the world where people are poor or have less power to resist. So it's not a coincidence that 54% of the global energy transition mines are located in or near indigenous territory. And that's simply not fair. Do you believe there is something like the NIMBY of the rich versus the NIMBY of the powerless? Uh, the powerless, uh, as we talk about it, uh, have limited opportunities to defend themselves and use national law, so yes. Um, do you think this is also the case in Sweden? Yes, uh, the national law does not uh, take the Sami people's consideration into the solution. You made it very clear that you are very opposed to that further uh, expansion of this mining area in, in Kiruna. Can you explain to us why you are so strongly opposed to this expansion? Well, 400 kilometers, maybe 300 kilometers south from here is Luleå River. I live along the slopes of Luleå River and it is totally dry riverbed for 17 kilometers. And it, this is not an environmental healthy and it has also destroyed the forest Sami culture in the slopes of the river of the Luleå River Valley. So you have to have the, the whole spectrum clear for you and not only one single mine in one single municipality, it's a whole region. But in the end, we, we know that we need uh, metals. Without metals, there is no, no transition. So how do you, how do you deal with that uh, complexity? Lower your consumption and spread the wealth and also best available practice and best available techniques. I have some parliament are in favor of improving the techniques and practice so we can get, produce even better technique and, and, and uh, routines, but it cannot be by increased uh, predatory extraction of natural resources. Jones has a meeting with Anders Sund, the research director of Boliden Mines. Maybe he sees a compromise between the Nordic mining industry and the indigenous Sami population. Can you sympathize with the Sami perspective? I, I think I cannot maybe in depth understand their, their views in detail, but I can definitely feel for them and I understand that uh, they are under a lot of pressure in today's society. Because they claim that the mines in the north of Sweden and Finland have an impact on their way of life, they have an impact on biodiversity. Mm. Uh, definitely, there is of course a local impact of the mining, but in terms of biodiversity, you can work on different measures in order to compensate for the impact that you have. And the mining industry is actively working on such initiatives. So, so hypothetically, if you would close all the mines in the north of Sweden and Finland, would that solve their problem? In the end, I think it wouldn't because they are impacted by a lot of other activities as well, like uh, infrastructure and uh, wind power, hydropower, growing uh, societies also. So uh, they are under pressure from a lot of different angles. So you can't turn back the clock? I think basically you, you cannot do that. You, of course, need to, to uh, try to find good compromises and so on uh, with the Sami communities. But in the end, uh, uh, the world goes forward all the time. So which, which way forward then with the Sami? Uh, well, at Boli then we have uh, a commitment towards the indigenous communities that we are working on. And uh, I think it's important to have a continuous uh, good dialogue with the local uh, Sami communities, uh, as well as other stakeholders, of course, where we are operating. So we just need to keep talking, that's clear. Uh, I think we need to have a continuous dialogue, yes. I get the feeling we are faced here with two completely different perspectives. The first perspective is the local Sami perspective of a traditional way of life which dates back from hundreds of years ago. The second perspective is the perspective of an ecologically full world moving towards 9.6 billion people where we are trying to move towards a sustainable world back within the planetary boundaries. 
which way forward should we go? I think the only option here is to maintain the dialogue, keep speaking to each other, respect each other, involve the Sami in all future plans for mining of energy transition metals, make them a partner, a stakeholder, let them share in the benefits and work together. We will end this story on a positive note. Although we'll need more mining of energy transition metals, the overall level of global mining will decrease in the coming decades. This is because the mining of coal, which is the main cause of climate change when it's consumed, will be phased out. The energy transition metals, on the other hand, are good for our climate and can be recycled in the circular economy. A very convincing graph, but not for the Sami. Yeah, that brings me to my final question. What is your final statement towards the Swedish government? Well, to the Swedish government, I would say that you should incre increase your contacts with the Sami parliament and also make sure that some of the profits that are made in the Arctic also will gain the Sami parliament and the homeless in Sweden. It is created an inhuman society at the moment and it's unbearable to see that. I feel your pain and I have my deepest respects for what you're trying to achieve. But I'm also very pleased and happy at the moment. Of course, we have obstacles in our way, but we have the Sami parliaments have never had better opportunities than we have today to change our future, if that is what we want. Thank you very much, Stefan. I wish you all the best. Thank you.